guys welcome you all to my channel if this is your first time of coming to my channel thanks a lot don't forget to give this video a thumbs up like share and subscribe in today's video is going to be a very sensitive topic which is how to appeal for your denial study denial visa or when you have been denied for your visa how to appeal now i know that being in that phase or that situation where you get denied for your visa is a very sensitive one i know it can be emotionally draining it can be mentally draining and you are going to cry and feel bad about it trust me i also had a fair share of being denied a visa when i applied to norway so i definitely know how it feels and that is why i'm here to hold your hands to walk you through this journey so that you can get it once and for all and peradventure you came across this journey when you are in that point where you want to appeal that is why i'm here to walk you through the appeal process so that you can get it because at the end of the day the goal is to get the visa either once or during your appeal process and that is why this video is essential for you to pay attention to the end and also take note of everything i'm going to say in this video now i'm also going to say that i have a video on document required for your visa process i have a document on a video on how to fill in your application form those videos are very essential because your document has to be as accurate as possible to help you scale through or not even pass through this denial phase at all and also how you fill in your application form is very very important every detail is important and i'm going to link those videos in the description box please go ahead and watch those videos so that you can really understand and have an in-depth knowledge on what you need and how to get it right because whether we like it or not part of the reasons why people get denied for their study visa is simply because of just one thing that doesn't align in your documents or one thing that doesn't convince them enough that you should be given the opportunity to come into poland so please pay attention to this video and also watch those videos that will help you by eventually you are in your interview process or you are looking forward to go for your interview please watch this video so that you can escape that route of being denied and if you are denied and you are looking for how to appeal watch this video so that you can help you on how to scale through the appeal process now in my little years of having people who has reached out to me on instagram those who has reached out to me on whatsapp and also in the comment section my details are in the description box i'm always here to walk you through the process as much as i can i'm gonna say that one of the problem or the mindset that people have that ends up being denied or ends them being denied is their mindset the number of i heard this I heard getting visa is difficult. I heard they are denying people a lot. I heard you have to go in with a positive mindset because whether you like it or not, the kind of mindset you have has a way to influence or to affect how you are going to behave or also the performance or the behavior of a certain thing. So if you have a negative, a wrong mindset, of they don't they don't give visa easily they easily deny people if you go in with that mindset there is every tendency that you might be in that position also and please shade away every i hate this i hate that i don't like it when people reach out to me to even say it. i hate this i hate that shade it away from your mindset because the truth is every day somebody walks out of that embassy with a visa so put your mind position yourself that you should be the one and shade away every negativity that has to do with denial or what you've heard from people at this point i believe that your mindset is cleared and you have an open mindset at this point now there are about 22 to 25 reasons on why people are being denied however in my little years of experience i'm gonna say little because i know i've also tried to help as many people as possible who has reached out to me and i'm still very open to helping as many people as possible also 
in my little years of experience i'm going to say that there are about 22 to 25 reasons on why people are being denied but for the sake of this video i'm going to channel it to the three major reasons for being denied out of these 22 reasons there are three major ones that that's what people get a lot of times you get that's what people get a lot of time because in every 10 students who are being denied these three reasons are basically about eight to nine of them so this is not to say that for every other reasons they don't give students but this is just to say these are the common ones that are being given at this point and in order for this video not to be too long i'm going to focus on these three major ones however if you want me to create a video on the other ones just let me know in the comment section i can do it in form of a series so that you know we can get through all of them as much as i can so the first number it always comes in a sheet and trust me i pray that if you are watching this video you don't get to experience that shit because i know how i saw that sheet of paper at the mid like a full scrap sheet at the middle of my passport when i went for norway interview i know how that broke me down and i just hope that if you are in this process now i hope you don't get to see that paper <laughs> i hope you don't get to see that paper but if you've seen the paper brace up I am here also I've gone through that phase let me walk you through on how to appeal and also to get it right okay so the first number that I'm gonna say is number three I'm gonna be looking down because I have to read it so that we can understand it at the end of the day let me read what we have for number three like I said which is the first one you do not have sufficient financial means you do not have sufficient financial means for the duration of your intended stay in the republic of poland you do not have enough financial means this simply has to do with your bank statement so once one is being denied for number three or the way to avoid being denied for number three is making sure that your financial document which is your proof of funds is accurate and also the exact amount now i know you might want to ask me that hi tg how will i know the exact amount okay it varies from school to school just because your school fees vary from my school fees your city vary from my city so we might not end up using the same amount for our bank statements or our, or our proof of funds you get it so all you have to do is to go ahead and calculate how much is needed so basically my studies is two years study and msc for two years you are going to check out your tuition fee for those two years deduct how much you've paid so for my school you can pay per semester and right from some schools you can pay per year so you deduct the one you've paid either per semester or per year you deduct this from your general school fees add your accommodation for the 12 years and then you are going to get a value for it for better calculation please check the polish website they have like a details calculation on this but let me just breeze you through your tuition fee for the two years deduct the one you have paid you have the balance and if you've paid the whole two years tuition fee or the whole four years tuition fee then good for you right and then you add your accommodation for 12 years and then you multiply it you will check out the details in the polish um websites where you'll be able to calculate it so for mine or during my time i used about 10 million naira. so i'm always going to say that even when you are done calculating it because those calculations are not in the same currency with naira which is my own country it's also advisable that you add a little to it just in case if the exchange rates kind of like front rate so let's say that at the end of my calculation i have about 9 million naira. it's just okay for me to add extra one million euro just in case if the rate of calculating at that point is different from what i'm using to calculate it so with that you are going to get the exact amount so you can use like 10 million naira you can use 11 12 13 you can use 8 million you can use 7 you can use 9 million like i said it depends on your tuition fee and also how much you've paid so we might be going to the same university and i have just paid for one semester and you've paid for two semesters automatically our calculations are not going to be the same because you've paid for two semesters why i just have one semester payment however 
if you need assistance in your bank statements on how to calculate it or maybe you want to confirm if your calculation is correct or if the amount of your calculation is correct i'm here to help you to cross check or just to confirm you know any information you need regarding that and my details are in the description box where you can reach out to me also it's also very necessary that when you are being sponsored in the case of you know sponsorship that such financial of course you are being sponsored it simply means that you know your financial or your proof of funds should be in your sponsor's account because your sponsor is the one sponsoring you so all your calculations and extra an extra should be in your sponsor's accounts now why do your sponsor have to have extra even after this calculation this is simply because when your sponsor is done sending you to school or when your sponsor is done sending you to Poland they also need money back home to sustain and to feed so your sponsor should have above your you know your calculation in their bank account so like i said for an example if your calculation at the end of the day is 10 million naira, your sponsor should have more than that because your sponsor should be able to feed herself should be able to clothe herself even when you've gone or even when you've traveled because this is the this is the person sponsoring you but the person also has to have enough money so it's also necessary that your sponsor has enough money to prove that while i sponsor you i can also to sustain myself back home in you know Nigeria or anywhere you are coming from another thing I'll also say is that your bank statement is six months which is of course at the Polish Embassy they currently need six months and also the calculations please check the Polish Embassy and read you see the time you are using to consume what people say what people say spend it on the website and read sometimes i get certain questions in as much as i am very open to assist you through any means you know either your admission or appointment or filling of the form or you know avoid being denied i'm very open to assist you but in as much as i am open to assist you please do your own job by reading and getting the basic information it doesn't make sense when you are reaching out to me and you are asking me basic questions that it is everywhere on the website or basic information you can find on google or you can even find in a video that i have made so please read watch the videos and read so that is that when you are able to secure that it's going to help you escape you you know you're not going to have issues of being denied for number three because whether you like it or not finances or money is very important when you are traveling or in your relocation journey generally so the next number which is and note that i am not saying this number according to how people are being denied i just started from the up like one two three so after three they were moving to the next number not in accordance of how people are being denied for it do you get it if you do please give this video a thumbs up and drop your questions in the comment section okay so number eight which is the next one is you have not justified the purpose and condition of your intended stay you have not justified the purpose or intention of your intended stay so I'm going to take eight nine and ten together because you see the way they are following themselves that part that part is very very important eight nine and ten they are very very important so i'm going to take eight nine and ten together because basically it's almost like the same solution to the three of them so number nine says there is a reasonable doubt there is a reasonable doubt regarding your intention to leave the territory after your studies there is a reasonable doubt to leave there is a reasonable doubt regarding your intention to leave the territory of poland before the expiring of your visa it simply means that they feel like before your visa expires like before your visa expires you are, you are gonna leave so if your visa is going to expire after one year or at the end of your study they feel like you are not going there to study there's every tendency that you are going to leave before you are done with school you know they're not really clear about that number 10 there are reasonable doubts regarding the reliability of the statements you made there are reasonable doubts regarding 
the reliability of the statements you made about the purpose of your stay you see that reasonable doubt about the statement you made that is your sop statement of purpose you see that number 10 hmm? okay let me just address it you see that number 10 that there is a reasonable doubt about the statement you made your statement of purpose it is very very important it is as important as anything now like i said i'm going to take eight nine and ten together because it all means like they are doubting you that you're not going to you're going to leave before you left or they are doubting you that you came to study or they are doubting you that there's a statement you made that is wrong now for that number eight where they doubt that you came to study it has to do with your one one of the reason is your school documents not aligning with what you have with your application form that is why i told you that application form is very important and i have a video on that fill it correctly especially your intended date of arrival it is as important as your name now you've stated that for an example right your school have stated that today is march april 5 for an example you've stated that um my arrival date to poland on your application form is april 5 right and then your school is saying that school resumes april 12. excuse me where will you stay for those seven days i don't get it it's not aligning you know it simply means that you're not going to school you have somewhere else you're going to another reason is because sometimes maybe you get you got your appointment or you're going for your interview when your school has resumed please mail your school when you've gotten your appointments your interview date mail your school tell them mail your faculty mail your department tell them i've got an interview for so, so so and so did i need a document from you people now even though you've collected documents before during your admission process eh when your interview comes collect another document from the school why one is going to have reason um one is going to have recent dates so if your school has resumed before your interview they're going to give you extension letter to state that you are still allowed or they've given you permission to come three it's also like a way to say oh my school is aware that i'm coming yes even if you've gotten documents before eh once you get your interview dates mail your school collect the recent documents if your school has resumed before your interview ask them for extension letter ask them if you've done first semester because some schools allow you to do first semester even if you're not able to figure out your appointment days before then if you've done first semester before your interview right ask them for your results ask them for your statement like your results um sample of your results ask them for the documents ask them for your accommodation documents you see those documents from school especially the recent ones they are very important and it will save you from being denied for number eight now for number nine that's i'm going to say that your your um arrival dates right and also your statement of purpose is very important and also i also mentioned it in my previous video which i'm going to mention it here again is that your arrival dates your insurance and your flight reservation dates must tally together they must tally together now you've stated that i want to travel my intended date of travel is april 5 right on your application form and then your insurance is starting april 12. so within that one week are you saying you're not going to be insured so your insurance must start it must start it's even better your insurance start before you arrive so if you've stated in your application form that i'm going to travel april 5 your insurance must have started like maybe april 4 or april 3rd or that april 5 don't start your insurance a week after or even a day after that soon number two if on your arrival date you've said that you're going to travel april 5 your flight reservation date, the day you book that you're going to travel, must be that same April 5. You cannot say in your in your application form that I'm going to travel April 5. And then your flight ticket of your flight 
reservation is showing that you booked flight for april 8th it simply means that you've not proved your intention to travel because how will you state in your application form that you are traveling april 5 and then you booked a flight for april 8th make it make sense that's like a reasonable doubt why you are not gonna yeah, maybe you're not going there maybe you booked the flight to go somewhere else not to your school so those things must tally now for number 10 your bank your statement of purpose you see that statement of purpose i'm gonna say that statement of purpose is just like they're giving you a blank check to say this is a blank check prove to me why you want to come to this school why you want to study this course why this country among other countries and after this your study what are your plans what is the assurance that you go back home you know that is what your sop your statement of purpose should contain convince them and not confuse them the moment you are confusing them you are going to get you know denied so convince them that oh for an example i did human resource in my bsc right and in my msc now i'm studying economics and trade i should be able to relate the both of them on the reason why i did this in my bsc and i want to do this in my masters in that sop even if you did the same course still state that oh i did human resource in my bsc because of this this and this and in my msc i also want to go into it further that's why i'm also doing human resource to also enlighten me you know you have to prove your course starting from your course in the beginning of the sop now when you've also convinced them why you want to study this course you also have to put in or chip in why this school oh i want this school because of these they have equipment they have the fa um, facilities you know the city is also comfortable for international students while you are pitching the school pitch the city you know every city has something unique and something organic so pitch a pitch of the city in your sop why this city you know now once you are done with that convince them why why poland among other countries why this place that is why you are going to convince them on the reason why you feel like poland is the best place for you and also you are also going to convince them that after your studies when you've learned to become a successful human resource manager you are also going to go back home to you know maybe have a firm or to put back your input into your country because they want to see that why you've learned you can also contribute or also take such information back to your own country so you see that sop don't joke with it convince them about those four things however however if you need guidance on how to write don't copy let me just say this don't copy a random sop from google or from chargbt and write it because you are not going to hit the nail at the point you're not going to hit the nail at the the head of the nail something like that don't just get a random sop because your sop must pinch those reasons that i mentioned so even if you are sorting for random sop please ensure that it pinches your study your school the city why poland and also what you will do or the connection or your tie to your own country those things must be included in your sop if you need any assistance on how to guide you to write your sop or also how to do your sop or also how to you know help you through anything at all please you can just reach out to me in the description box my details are there my emails are there my instagram is even on the screen you can just reach out and also be patient with me i will definitely respond to you as much as i can so these four reasons the first one which has to do with your financial statements or your bank statements please make sure it is accurate number eight they don't believe that you are going to leave or you are going to leave before has to do with your school documents collect it reach out to them it's your rights okay now for number eight nine and ten your sop must be correct those documents i mentioned that must tally must be correct okay now if you've gotten to this point and you are watching this video and you are denied i know how you feel it is not the end of the world move on and appeal and hopefully it's going to work out so in poland when you get denied the first time or when you get denied you have the opportunity to appeal within i think one week or 14 days i can't really remember currently please go ahead gather your documents back gather all the documents you took back with the corrected form of those documents right the corrected form of these documents take them back 
during your um of course with your international passport take them back to the embassy and submit it and also the most important one among everything that i've just mentioned is to pray pray and also put on a positive mindset that you are going to get it and do what is right and just pray and have a positive mindset that you are going to get it i hope you guys have been able to learn from this video let me know if you want me to share other reasons why people get denied in the comment section and of course i'm going to be here to walk you through all your process from admission to appointment to filling a form to appeal to avoid being denied i'm here to always listen to you and that's why i have my details in the description box and also on the screen and i hope this video has helped someone not to get denied and if you're in that phase of appealing i hope this video is going to be very helpful to you just so that you can scale through and once again i'm here to say congratulations on your visa and of course i'll see you guys in my next video Bye!